Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So on today's video, we are going to speak about a very talked about FMCG stock and it is not IDC and it is not HUL, it is Adani Wilmar. I am going to present a complete analysis of the Adani Wilmar stock. I will talk about the risk profile of the company, what are the primary advantages that it enjoys and whether or not you should be purchasing this stock now. That is the most important section. And what is my viewpoint? Will I be purchasing it? I will discuss that along the way. So let us get the discussion started and first and foremost, let us quickly try to understand what is it that Adani Wilmar does. So if you read the description of the company, it says that Adani Wilmar is a leading FMCG food company in India that offers most of the essential kitchen commodities for Indian consumers including oil, sugar, offer other range of products etc etc. But if we look at the product breakup, there are three segments from which it is making revenues. The first major segment for it is edible oil and approximately 65% of the revenue comes from the edible oil category. Second is industry essentials. This constitutes approximately 25% component for Adani Wilmer. And third and finally we have something like FMCG which constitutes roughly 11% of the sales. Now, couple of very important points that you would not have seen other people talk about Adani Wilmar. So let me give you a quick commentary here. First and foremost, you need to understand the fact that edible oil industry is a very low operating profit margin industry. If you are buying any edible oil, it's a commodity product. Commodity product means something like sugar, something like basic oil, something like wheat, something like rice. These are commodity products. Now, why am I highlighting this commodity point explicitly? There is a reason behind it because when it comes to commodity products, products, the operating profit margins are usually low, right? This is a very, very important point for you to understand. For example, when firms sell shampoos or when firms sell uncle chips, the profit margins there are higher. But when firms are selling rice, atta, dal, chawal and all that stuff, it's basic commodities. You will not be able to sell it at insane, crazy high prices. People will not go gaga about the fact that I'm going to buy this particular sugar from this particular company and I'm okay paying like 5x rates. No, that is highly unlikely to happen. It happens in very, very rare circumstances. And therefore, when it comes to commodity goods, systematically OPM or the operating profit margin is very, very low to begin with. So Adani Wilmar realizes it and Adani Wilmar is trying to move to this particular category. Name another firm in the description box which has recently given massive breakout. People are super happy because it gives a lot of dividends also. And that company too is moving its cigarette business more towards FMCG business. Name the firm. It's a small quiz for all of you. So this is a very important point. I outlined it here because this is what the entire game according to me is that if going forward in the future, Adani Wilmar is able to build its FMCG business, build its brand under different categories and is able to dial up that FMCG business, it will become a great company. No doubt about that. But if it gets stuck here where it is currently at, probably the growth multiples that are being assigned to Adani Wilmar, it will become problematic. This is a key point that you must understand as a nuanced investor. If you like this point and the insight, do hit the like button. It will make me super happy. It will help this video reach out to more people. So let's start understanding more about the Adani Wilmar business. And first and foremost, we need to understand the strength of the company. So currently, if you take a look at the market share, you can clearly see that in the castor oil market, it is doing very well. It controls approximately 25% of the market. Similarly, in sunflower oil, it captures 14%. Similarly, in rice bran oil, it is is capturing 25% market. In steric asset, it controls approximately 32% market share and it is one of the leading companies in India when it comes to that segment. Many of you might ask me what is steric asset. So let me put up the snippet here and many people from chemical background will get super elated by reading about this. Steric acid, also called octadecanoic acid, one of the most common long chain fatty acids found in combination form in natural animals and vegetable fats. So basically it's an oil combination of animal plus vegetable fats. So essentially it's a type of an oil. So to cut the long story short, Adani Wilmar is doing very well when it comes to these edible oil markets. Edible oil are oils that are used for cooking purposes. So Adani Wilmar is doing really well when it comes to this particular edible oil business. There is absolutely no issues with the firm there. But having said this, it is at a critical juncture in its business where it is trying to move and grow its FMCG business more. So that is the entire story about and let us now try to understand that can it move the needle? Can it move successfully to FMCG space because the FMCG space is now getting very, very crowded. So let me present a pro and con analysis about the strength of Adani Wilmar. This will help you make an investment decision. So let us start with the risk side of things first. So as I earlier said that one of the key risks in Adani Wilmer's business is the product itself where it is currently focused. So if you check the financials of Adani Wilmar and here you can go on the profit and 
and loss statement and you can take a look at this OPM operating profit margin the operating profit margin for the firm as a whole is just 3% 4% these are hardly any numbers if you compare it to major FMCG businesses so let me run some numbers for you so let's go to Hindustan Unilever take a look at its OPM so OPM in the last five years has been hovering around 25% which is huge difference if you go take a look at Colgate Palmolive again take a look at OPM again around that 25% 30% mark right so great profit margins here again take a look at ITC limited right and again you will see that the operating profit margin is 35 40% also so huge difference between the operating profit margin of Adani Wilmer vis-a-vis -vis other large FMCG companies or companies that are trying to become major players in the FMCG space example being ITC that from cigarette business it is trying to move towards FMCG space and these established players are already enjoying very high profit margins but in Adani Wilmer's case currently the profit margins are very low to begin with and also the nature of the product that it sells that is not a high growth product so here is a snippet for you that outlines the growth of the edible oil market and you can see that the edible oil segment is expected to show a volume growth of 4.3%. So typically the edible oil market is growing at between 3 to 5 or 3 to 6% in India. This is not like crazy high growth rate for any industry. So first key takeaway about Adani Wilmer stock is that the type of product that it sells, it's not a high profit margin product. And also the nature of the industry is such that it is a slow growth industry. And that is probably one of the reasons why Adani Wilmer actually came into the IPO game, raised a lot of money, and now they will use that money to get into and develop that FMCG business. So this is a very, very, and the most important point that you need to note down as an investor. Now comes the second key risk in the business, it is the operational risk. So here is a snippet for you that I have picked from the DHRP or the IPO filings for the company and it categorically says that our operations are dependent on the supply of large amount of raw material such as unrefined palm oil, soya bean oil, sunflower oil, etc, etc. So of course, these are driven by international commodity price changes. And if these prices change, that Anani Wilmer will not be able to source this material at low cost and keep providing the product at low price value. So of course, there is a lot of operational risk that is given in the business. Now comes the third risk, which is the supply chain risk. Take a look at this snippet. It categorically says, we depend significantly on imports of raw material finished goods. In addition to domestic supplies and various factors may result in inadequate supply of raw material finished goods or result in an increase in our cost structure. Again, the same point that hey, we don't know how the international commodity prices are going to move. Our operation is very big, complex. So we have a lot of raw material and supply chain risk. Now supplant this, word of the day today is supplant. So let me know what does that mean. Supplant this with these factors that are outlined. So here they have talked about increased transportation cost issues, delayed shipments because a lot of raw material comes from outside India and gets factored in as raw material for Adani Wilmer products. Then you have financing costs, then you have labor shortages, export business. So it's a very giant complex business that we are talking about here and it involves a lot of supply chain risks as of now. Now comes the next set of risk, which is the conglomerate risk. So Adani Wilmar is a joint venture between Adani's, we all know who Adani's are, and the Wilmar Group, which is an international agriculture player and they are very good at what they do. It's a joint venture, but there is something called as corporate risk. For example, if there are some issues with Adani ports, then almost all the companies of the Adani Group, including Adani Wilmar, will suffer a lot. If there are any lawsuits that are filed with any of the companies, then again Adani Wilmar stock might suffer. And bunch of other conglomerate risks that comes with such a business. But just to present the entire story here, there are also benefits of a conglomerate business that for example Adani ports can probably clear the consignments that are coming for Adani Wilmer at a lower cost, lower price. So it can be helpful for the firm as well. So there are both pros and cons. You need to make a call whether it makes sense to invest. Now comes the final risk which according to me is the biggest risk that Adani Wilmer business currently has. So what Adani Wilmer business is trying to do is that it is trying to migrate to a completely new vertical or rather is trying to build its new vertical in the FMCG industry and FMCG space. It will go and launch a range of different FMCG products and will try to compete with companies like Merico, Nestle, etc, etc head on. This is not an easy game to play for any company and make its products stand out. These are big international companies, not very easy to defeat them at their own game. They are very well entrenched. They already have things figured out. Now, I'm not saying that the Danis can't do it. All I'm simply pointing out is that this battle between these big, large international players like HUL, Nestle, etc. versus Adani Wilmar might be very bloody and it can last for a very long period of time. 
So you might say that Akshat, you are a big proponent of HUL and companies like HUL. Why are you not so bullish about Adani Wilmar? Because HUL's brands have already been built. That's the simple basic point. But Adani Wilmar, if it is launching new product, it has to undertake that brand building exercise. So for a substantial period, they might have to undertake a lot of loss, burn a lot of money in terms of generating that market buzz. And that is not a good phase for any investor. So I don't know at what point the company will be able to expand into that FMCG game and will be able to make that business thrive. But I as an investor will feel very, very iffy about this entire game being played by Adani Wilmar in case it gets into this space of brand building which looks like that they are going to do it. So that to me is the biggest risk factor with the firm. So with that said, let us start discussing the growth prospects of the firm. And there are a few key great points about the company. So first and foremost, Sadani Wilmar can undertake something called as product line extension. For example, they can get into soap business, they can get into hand wash soap, they can get into packaged food business. So there is a lot of scope in terms of expansion. You can clearly check it from their website. They are quoting a few things. They are not big players in this space as of now, but they have very, very clear plans to move into these spaces. So opportunity for expansion is huge for a company like Adani Wilmar as of now. Now, second key point, Adani Wilmar can become a company that exports a lot out of India. So it can leverage the Make in India brand and can export a lot of stuff out of India. Now, why am I saying it? So here is a chart for you. Please zoom in and see. This is a very important chart. So Adani Wilmar last year acquired a company called as Adani Wilmar Private Limited, which is a Singapore based company. Now, this company in turn owns another company called as Leverian Holdings. Now, Leverian Holdings in turn holds a company called as Bangladesh Edible Limited. Now, Bangladesh Edible Limited in turn holds a company called as Shunshing Edible Oil. So the point I'm trying to tell you is that just by one acquisition, Adani was able to get into a lot of different geographies, including Bangladesh and Singapore. And it clearly has ambitions to expand out of India. Now, that is just one part of the equation. The second part of the equation that you need to understand is that India is focusing a lot in terms of developing its internal capabilities and conglomerates like Adani's and undertaking a big role in terms of shaping that story. For example, India is focusing a lot on agriculture, especially when it comes to being self-reliant in terms of edible oil space. So they are giving a lot of incentives to farmers. Second key thing, they are giving a lot of incentives to conglomerates to go and acquire and build big warehouses. So this entire warehousing space. So what is warehousing space? So if you're living somewhere in Haryana near Gurgaon, there is like acres of land that are being bought by Singapore based companies. They are buying like thousands of acres of land. Why are they doing it? Because they want to turn that into an agricultural export hub. That is the reason why this warehousing game is being played in India right now and a lot of foreign money is coming into the equation. And Adani's will do it at scale and their recent acquisition points to this fact. Now third and final firepower for Adani Wilmar is the Adani group that Mr. Adani wherever he puts his hand he turns that company into a multi-billion dollar company. So it would be no surprise that he will be able to do the same for Adani Wilmar also. Now comes the next question and a very important question that Akshat you have spoken about pro and con. You are leaning towards pro it seems. So what are you going to do? Are you going to buy the stock immediately? So there are two critical points that I would like to outline. One is if you take a look at the stock, it got listed on February 11th and within one and a half month, it has already given a huge run up. So a lot of positive news has already pushed this stock quite high. What was that positive news? Take a look at this snippet. So experts have been telling us that, hey, that Adani Wilmar is skyrocketing due to two primary factors. One is Ruchi Soya FPO injecting new life into edible oil segment and palm oil prices appreciating by 14%, providing a margin boost to companies' unsold inventory. Now, both these reasons are not sensible reasons for a stock price growth on a sustainable basis. For example, just because Ruchi Soya FPO has come in, it does not mean that, you know, all the companies in that space are going to do wonderfully well. In fact, there is no guarantee that even Ruchi Soya will do very well. So this reason does not make any sense. Second key reason is that this is somewhat sensible that okay, hey, there is a ton of unsold inventory and because the oil prices have gone up recently, so whatever unsold inventory was there, now Adani Wilmar is going to repackage it, put a sticker with a higher price on it and is going to sell to people. Yes, that will happen, no doubt about that. And probably there will be a short term boost in profit. But is this sustainable profit? The answer is no. It's not as if that edible oil prices are going to be high forever. That is not going to happen. The edible oil prices will come back to their sensible level at some point and we need to judge the business from that particular perspective. Now there is one final piece of news before I give my final verdict on what I would be doing. So take a look at the shareholding pattern. So right now you will see that promoters. So these would be Adani group, promoter and foreign promoter. They have 43.97 and 43.97. 
So they have approximately 87% holding in the company. And as per SEBI norms, the primary shareholders will have to sell their equity and bring it down to 75%. This is what the SEBI norms say. Now you will see that FII's, DII's do not have a big holding on this company as of now. If this company starts to do well, then FII, DII's will definitely take position. This is not a hidden stock. Everyone knows about Adani's and FII's, DII's will figure it out when to take positions in this company. Which brings me to the final verdict that number one, Adani Wilmar is a decent stock, no problem there. Is it guaranteed success? The answer is no, absolutely not because they are entering into that FMCG game. Should you be purchasing that stock right now? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to invest one rupee in it as of now. Why? Because the stock looks overvalued to me. Will I eventually buy this stock? Probably yes. When will I do it? I will monitor the positions of FII, DII on it. So whenever you see, and if you happen to see before me that FII's, DII's are taking positions in Adani Wilmar stock, do comment on my YouTube videos. I will make an updated video to this. There is no point in us being fancy and trying to time the market. Let FII's, DII's do it. Whenever they pick stake in this particular company, that might be a sensible time for us. Again saying that might be a sensible time for us to purchase that stock. We should not get fancy with these type of conglomerate businesses. Let other people take positions. It is fine. Let it run up. Let it even become double. Not a problem. As long as you are making money, you should be happy. So right now the risk reward equation does not make sense to me in terms of taking positions. So I will wait and watch. But overall, this is a decent company. There seems to be nothing fundamentally off with the stock as of now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please press the like button and I will see you tomorrow.